My favorite method is Kalkwasser. It's simple, effective, and affordable compared to other methods. I mix calc powder with RODI water in my 30 gallon drum every week or as needed. As my tank has matured and my drum starts emptying faster than my evaporation rate, I'll eventually need to switch to dosing two part solution. But for now, calc is my go to. The biggest advantage for calc over two part solution is that it boosts both alkalinity and calcium in equal concentration. That means I don't have to deal with multiple dosing pumps or solution. Plus, calcwasa has an added benefit of significantly raising pH, which I found to be far more effective at maintaining a stable pH in my aquarium compared to two-part solution. Since alkalinity isn't a physical element, Kalkwasser acts as a buffer that solves three problems. It stabilizes pH, alkalinity, and calcium levels. In contrary, two-part tackles only two problems but requires two dosing pump and double the effort. Unless you're setting it up with a reliable dosing pump, I wouldn't recommend using calc as a primary source for dosing alkalinity in your system. However, if you're running something like a calcium reactor as your primary method and have a fixed amount of calc added to a freshwater container, then it could work. Usually, people that have calcium reactors use calc to boost up their pH because the calcium reactor will depress the pH in their system. Most new tanks won't have significant alkalinity and calcium consumption during the first year, so don't stress about this aspect early on too much. Focus on getting your tank up and running first and worry about dosing later. Even in a large system, the alkalinity demand started small and has grown gradually. I began dosing um, 1,000 milliliters per day and have now increased to 9,000 milliliters per day. I believe I can continue using calc for another year before needing to supplement it with two-part solution. The reason for this is that calc wasser has a maximum saturation point in fresh water. Once you've added the maximum amount of calc powder, the remainder won't dissolve and it will settle at the bottom of the container. The liquid portion, which should have a pH of 12, is what gets dosed. However, your tank daily evaporation rates limits how much calc you can dose in your 24-hour period. Once your system's alkalinity and calcium demands exceeds what can be supplied Applied through your evaporation rate, you will need to supplement that amount. I haven't reached that point yet, but when I do, I plan to start by dosing two part weekly to boost levels. If the consumption becomes very high, I might even add a calcium reactor. There's a common concern that lower pH associated with calcium reactors could harm corals growth, but in my opinion, this is overblown. Corals have thrived in calcium reactor systems for years, even with slightly lower pH levels. In fact, I've stopped obsessing over pH entirely. For years, I would check twice a day and try everything like opening windows, repositioning fans around the tank, or adding extra pumps to the sump to raise it. While some of these methods work, I've realized the real focus should be on keeping the primary parameters stable and preventing things like nitrates and phosphates from spiraling out of control. Here you can see me mixing calc in my 30 gallon reservoir. Once mixed, calc loses its potency when exposed to air. So I use an airtight seal container to prevent degradation. So far, I haven't seen significant alkalinity swings between mixing fresh batch of couch and using an older one, which leads me to believe it's remaining stable between refills. My mixing process is straightforward. I add a one and one quarter cups of calc to my container, ensuring it's thoroughly mixed, seal the container, and then turn the dosing pump back on. Currently, I only need to adjust my dosing pump setting once a month. When I find myself needing to tweak it weekly, I know my tank is thriving and consuming more. Currently, I'm dosing 24 hours a day on a consistent cycle, so it's constantly dropping uh, calc into my system. When I was chasing my pH, I would actually manipulate the dosing, so I would have it dosing at night, then dosing during the day, and honestly, it became a little bit of a challenge, so I just now run it on a 24-hour cycle. In the past, when I used two-part dosing, weekly adjustments were the norm. I suspect that calc's ability to stabilize alkalinity levels reduces the need for constant fine-tuning, similar to a calcium reactor uses experience with both alkalinity and calcium stability. ATO method. With my dosing pump, I use a fully saturated calc wasser solution. If I need to increase the alkalinity dosing, I can easily adjust it by tweaking the pump settings using an ATO reservoir of calc. However, making precise adjustments makes it much more difficult. The only practical way I can see this working is to start with half or less saturated solution and slowly adding more calc to boost levels. But honestly, this approach sounds like a headache. Unless you're using another method to main alkalinity like the calcium reactor I mentioned earlier and only relying on a fixed amount of calc, I'd recommend sticking with something like a dedicated 
dedicated dosing pump for more precise and safety. If something went wrong, like an ATO dumping a large amount of fresh water into your system, you could end up with a massive pH spike that could instantly kill everything in your aquarium. This is one of the reasons why many hobbyists from the 80s and 90s moved away from Kalkwasser. There were countless horror stories about the catastrophic tank crashes. However, I think a lot of those issues stem from people using it incorrectly due to the lack of information available at the time. Today, we have a wealth of information at our fingertips, but just because it's good for someone else doesn't mean it, it can't be bad for you. Don't be a sheep. Follow every piece of advice that comes your way. Sometimes you need to filter out the good from the bad. For example, just because Chris Meckley from ACI dumps a bunch of saturated calcwasa into his tank at night and sees incredible results doesn't mean it's practical or safe for your system. His farm is in a garage. He probably opens the door every day, gets fresh air in there. He's in this Florida sun. There are countless variables at play that make his approach work for him, but may not work for you. Let's be honest, doing something every night in your reef tank isn't practical for most people. What happens when you go on vacation? Are you really going to ask a buddy to dump a ton of calc into your system every night? Calcster. I was very close to using a calc stir connected to my dosing pump, and I'm glad I didn't for a number of reasons. With a 1500 square foot basement, I have enough space for a large freshwater container that I could fill with calc and RODI water. Mix and seal airtight. This setup works perfectly for me and avoids the additional maintenance that comes with a calc stir. That being said, if the space is limited for you and the equipment needs to fit under your tank stand, a calc stir can be a great option. These reactors allow you to add a substantial amount of calc powder, and as your dosing pump pushes water through the system, through the reactor, it mixes the RO water with a calc before discharging a fully saturated solution into your sump. The downsides, you'll need to keep a close eye on the calc levels and ensure the stir remains clear. Calc has a tendency to stick to everything and I can easily imagine the reactor becoming cloudy and hard to see inside it. To avoid issues, make sure you plan to service the reactor every few weeks or as recommended by the manufacturer. Another drawback for me is the cost. I understand this hobby serves a niche market and prices have to be higher for com companies to make a profit. However, I wish the manufacturers or suppliers of calc would offer more affordable reactor options. Lower price might encourage more hobbyists to adopt this method, which in turn could boost sales of their calc products. Till next time, peace out.